So now that we've tested the engine and verified it no longer has an oil leak, it's time to uh, do something. It's time to go ahead and get the engine back into the boat. So let's get to it. So before we get this engine back in the boat, I am going to go ahead and remove this exhaust riser piece just because it's really hard to maneuver the engine when I'm trying to put it down into the engine mounts in the boat with this on. So we're going to take that off. <clears throat> Boy, there you go, that gasket ripped even more. Boy, that silicone uh, gasket maker sure did do the trick though. While I was running it out of the boat, we didn't have any water that leaked down through the main exhaust port. So that's pretty good. But I do have those new, or the new exhaust riser gasket now that I'll be able to put on. I should also mention it's really important whenever your exhaust gasket rips and tears that you make sure to uh, scrape off any of the old gasket before putting the new one on. So you make sure you have a nice flat mating surface. Otherwise, if there's like a bit of old gasket that's a bump in there, that might cause a leak. So it's important to go through and get all that off. All right, we finished getting the mating surface of the exhaust riser cleaned up there. As you can see, nice and shiny, as well as on the exhaust manifold side. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the exhaust pipe back in the boat. But actually, what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and clean up some of the dirtiness at the bottom of the bilge here so it's nice and clean for putting the engine back in. Okay, so we got the bilge area cleaned up a bit in here. So now that we've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and get the exhaust pipe and screw it back into the transom assembly. Alright, so we've got that exhaust pipe in, so now we've got the boat ready to go. It's time to take this engine and hoist it up and put it back in the boat. So after I got the engine lowered down into position, I went ahead and put in the mounting bolts loosely. They aren't tightened down all the way yet. Same goes for the back. And now at this point, after you got those bolts in, you can go ahead and lower down the hoist a little bit more to let some slack out. And then you can remove the chains and get your hoist out of the way. tell you guys what hopefully I don't have to get those bad boys out again for a long time 
All right, we got the boat pulled all the way back in the garage. It is getting a little bit late on us outside. So last thing I want to do tonight is go ahead and get the exhaust riser put back on the engine. And as you can see, I do have a new gasket for it. Actually, I have a two pack of them just in case I ever need an extra one down the road. And I am going to go ahead and use a little bit of the gasket maker with this gasket just as a little extra precaution. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy on. So it is the next day and let me tell you it is some gorgeous weather outside sunny and 60 degrees a perfect time to work on the boat so let me go ahead and get in the boat and bring y'all up to speed with where i'm at with reinstalling the engine so as you saw last night i did get this exhaust riser piece put back on and we gave the uh, gasket maker time overnight to dry and harden and while i was at it i went ahead and i hooked pretty much everything up on the engine inside the boat got the throttle hooked back up the shifting cables all the electrical components and the fuel line to the battery got all that put back in if you guys still want to watch how to do that just watch my engine removal video in reverse but now what i think i'm going to do now since i've got pretty much everything ready to go in the boat gonna go ahead and pull the boat about halfway out of the garage and see if we can get the outdrive back on I haven't decided yet whether or not I want to make installing the outdrive a separate video but well I'm sure you guys will be able to know by the time I post this video so with that said let me go ahead and install it now anytime you're taking your engine out, or even just the outdrive, and uh, before you put it back in, you definitely want to check your engine alignment for the drive shaft. Oh yeah, that's got a nice, well, there it goes all the way in. So if everything's lined up good, you should be able to spin your, uh, whatever this is called, you should be able to spin the alignment tool almost freely without too much resistance. And then you should be able to slide it out now. After checking the alignment, now we're ready to install the outdrive. All right, so first thing here, uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got your boat in forward gear so that the uh, shifting, uh, whatever you call that, the shifting piece is lined up straight, just like you would when you're taking it off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get my nuts off here because I put them back on the bolts. So that way I would not forget them. Okay, so two details here. First is just to make sure there's no rips along your gasket. Sometimes it can happen here where the edge is skinny, as well as on this side. Mine's in pretty good shape. Now the other thing is, this gasket or o-ring right here, that goes where the water port is, this guy likes to fall out, so you might want to use maybe some bellows adhesive or honestly even just like a little Elmer's glue stick just to have it enough stick to hold into position while you're sticking the outdrive on. Now for the outdrive itself make sure you've still got this gasket right here that goes around to help seal the whole bellows and chamber where the drive shaft and u-joint go through. Let's go ahead and get this 
put back in. There's really not much more to it. Okay, so we've got the outdrive part of the way on here. Uh, you can see we've almost got the whole U-joint in there. I do have the drive shaft sticking through the gimbal bearing at this point, but you might notice here we're coming up a little bit higher than where the bell housing is coming out. So we want to actually lift up the back of the boat a little bit higher just so it clears this a little better. So we're going to need to uh, lower down the front of our boat just a bit. Alright, so now we've got this lined up at a better height with the back a bit higher on the boat. So now we might be able to try and push this the rest of the way in there. Alright, so at this point I've got it almost to the bolts here. There's about two inches left to get it in. But I wanted to stop here to show you guys if you feel like you're getting stuck here and you just keep pushing and pushing, but it just won't go on, you don't want to push it too much. What might be happening here is this is right when your drive shaft is getting to the coupler and the splines on that might just not be lined up to where it can go in. So what you might want to do if you get stuck at this point is pull this bad boy back out a little bit okay enough to where you can see the u-joint and then actually turn it just a little bit see just like that you can just barely turn the u-joint to rotate the drive shaft now you might have to do it a few times if you turn it too much or too little because those splines aren't that big. Then after that, give it another shot. Make sure your O-rings and gaskets are still lined up right. Oh, there went my rope holding up my cylinders. My trim rims, I mean. So if while you're in the heat of the moment trying to push this bad boy on, if your trim rams, if the rope that's holding them up cuts and they fall and hit the ground like that, you can always just unhook the C-clip on one end so you can push them out to the side to get them on and put them back up afterwards. No big deal. So at this point, I did finally get the drive shaft started in the splines of the coupler. And so I'm right at where the bolts start now. So I should just be able to push it on there the rest of the way. And sometimes it's a snug fit, so don't be afraid to uh, use your shoe. And there we go. Now to just put the bolts on to tighten it up. So I got all the nuts tightened on to the stud bolts on both sides. So that's good to go. And one thing I did want to point out here is if you get a little bit of oil that leaks out, don't be alarmed. For me, it was because I took my sweet time where it was pressing on that nipple for the oil line going through. So a bit started leaking out before I got it pushed the rest of the way on with the bolts. So don't be alarmed by that. Just make sure to clean it up. So now with all the nuts tightened down, we are good to go. Cleaned up the oil. The last step we have to do is to hook the trim rams back up. And we're just going to do that the same way we took them off. Hey 
And just like that, we've got the outdrive back onto the boat and it is ready to go. So now let's go ahead and pull the boat out of the garage and hook up some muffs to that outdrive from the garden hose and try to run the engine and see how she goes. Alrighty, here goes nothing. Y'all are going to love this. So the engine's running. Everything's good. I start feeling back here and I feel like water spraying. And I'm like, what the is going on? So then I turn on my flashlight and I look. And I had forgotten to tighten up the worm gear clamps on the uh, exhaust pipe here. So it was just spraying up out of here in a mist. And now I've got... A wet mess I gotta go get a towel and wipe up. Alright, so we finished testing out the engine in the boat with the outdrive on. And everything's good to go. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I got the boat pulled back in the garage and it's time to uh, put the back seat back in. <laughs> got it all back together that beast of an engine is now contained Whew. boy it is getting late on me so I'm gonna finish getting my tools picked up out of here then I'm gonna slap the cover on this old boy to get it out of the garage Now before I ended the video, I did want to take a quick moment to take a step back and reflect on this project that I've been working on for over a year, restoring this boat. And many of you know it's taken a ton of time, but what some people don't know is making the YouTube videos about this has taken even more time than working on the boat itself. And we're coming up on a pretty big milestone here soon, which is going to be 4,000 subscribers, which blows my mind, honestly, that there's that many people out there who enjoy watching my struggles with this boat. But I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank all of you that have helped support the channel and come along on this journey with me over the last year. It's been a crazy ride, but uh, it's been an amazing experience, honestly, and I'm really humbled just to see how many people uh, have found some of the videos helpful, and that's really the main purpose of why I make them. You know, even if it was just a hundred or ten people that got something out of them or helped them figure out how to do a certain job on their boat, that's what makes it all worth it to me. But enough about that <laughs> but that is gonna do it for today's video i will see you guys next time